Hey everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to be talking about setting up and running your own private dedicated server out of your own home or on your own network that you control. So there are a few reasons why someone might want to do this. The biggest reason is cost. Running your own dedicated server, while it does have a little bit of a investment up front because you will need to buy a second copy of the game. In the long run, it will make it significantly cheaper to provide a multiplayer experience for you, your friends, and your family than renting a dedicated server from a server host. So let's think about it. A dedicated server host is typically gonna charge you $1 per slot per person per month. And typically the minimum server size is a four slot server. So that's about $4 a month or about $48 a year. And that is pretty darn close to the cost of the full retail version of the game. Now, I would suggest if you're going to run a dedicated server that you buy the Giants eShop copy or a physical copy of the game in order to install it on the server. The reason is that you really don't want to be messing with the Steam or Epic launcher on your dedicated server. So having a clean install, which is from either media or a digital download from Giants is going to be your best option. The other reason that you might want to have a dedicated server running locally is that typically web hosts are going to limit your disk space. For example, many web hosts provide simply four gigs of disk space for a game server. And you may find that over time, being limited to four gigs of mod space is, uh, is well, too limiting. And if that's the case, then running a private dedicated server is one surefire way of getting over that limitation. Because at that point, your only mod space limitation is going to be the amount of space that you have on your dedicated server's hard drive for adding mods. So now that you've decided that you're definitely ready to kind of jump ship and set up your own dedicated server, you're going to want to install the game on the server or on the computer that you're going to be using for this particular purpose. And it doesn't really need to be that big of a computer with that big hard drive or that powerful of a CPU. And in fact, it doesn't even have to have a GPU in it at all because when you launch the game, it's going to launch in a text box. I'm going to go ahead and put up the hardware suggestions that Giants has for what it's going to take to run a dedicated server at this point. And if you happen to have a spare computer around the house that maybe you've kind of retired, it's just sitting off in a closet somewhere, then you might be able to dust that off, power it up, install Farming Simulator 22 on it, and get going with your own dedicated server. So this tutorial is going to pick up, assuming that you have a full install of Farming Simulator 22 already installed on that dedicated server. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to navigate to your Farming Simulator 22 install directory. Now the install is going to default to C, Program Files, x86, Farming Simulator 2022. And as you can see here on the screen, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on a file that's called Dedicated Server. Not the one that has the Giants logo on it, but the file below it. With this file open, there's a few things that you're going to want to take a look at and a few things that you're going to want to change. So the first thing you're going to want to change is you're going to want to add a password to your dedicated server web interface. When you first install the game, you're going to get this exact configuration file with no password specified. So I'm going to go ahead and just specify admin as the password. 
Clearly, you wouldn't want to use this password for your real web server interface, but for this demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use admin. The other thing you want to do is down here where it says TLS port 8443. Unless you're going to actively put in certificates to protect your web interface through SSL, you want to want to back this out and you're going to want to put in false. So it appears just like that. The last thing you're going to want to take a look at is up here where it says web server port 8080. Now, if you know that you happen to have something already using port 8080 on your local network, then you're going to want to change that. If you're, if you're sitting there going, well, I don't know. How do I know this? Then you probably don't have anything running on port 8080. Once you're done, you want to go ahead and hit save. Save those settings. It may balk at you and say that you need to be administrator, or it may give you a UAC prompt in order to save this because typically saving something to C program files x86 is typically reserved only for administrative users. Once you've closed out of the configuration file, you're going to want to open your Defender Firewall Rules Advanced panel, and you're going to find that by searching Firewall on your Start menu. And then you're going to find something listed Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. That's what you're going to want to select, and you're going to get a window that looks like this. What we need to do is we now need to put a rule on the inbound side of our firewall to allow connections to that port, port 8080, or whatever port you had specified in the configuration file to be allowed into the computer. So we want to go to inbound rules. We want to go to new rule. And from here, we want to go to port next. And then we want to specify the port that we had in that configuration file, 8080. Then we want to go allow the connection. And we're going to go ahead and leave all of these checked. And then we're going to give it a name. We're going to call this Farming Simulator 2022 Dedicated Server. And then we're going to hit finish. And now we'll see that listed here. And if we scroll across, we're simply going to see that it is set to allow any connection from any outside address to port 8080. Just like that. And then now our firewall rule is set up. Without that firewall being configured, basically nobody would be able to connect to the system because the system would deny all inbound connections on port 8080. Now the next thing you're gonna to need to do, I am not gonna necessarily be able to demonstrate for you because it's gonna be very specific on what your home network is configured with. But what you need to do is now you need to set up your home wireless router or wired router, I should say, with a port forward. So what I would suggest you do is search your home routers make and model and use the word or the term port forwarding in that search to then see what is involved in setting up a port forward on your home router. Once you see what's involved with that, you're gonna to wanna to log into your home router and set up a port forward to the IP address of your dedicated server and port 8080. So how do you find out the IP address of your local computer? Well, that I can demonstrate for you, and this is how you're gonna find that out. On Windows, on the server that you are gonna be setting up to act as a dedicated server, you're gonna to wanna to click Start, and then type in CMD, and then hit Enter. You're gonna get a command prompt that's gonna look something like this. From there, you're gonna to wanna to type in IP config, C-O-N-F-I-G. And when you hit Enter, you're gonna find out what your local IP address is for that particular computer. For me, my local IP address is 192.168.4.44. So in your local home router, you're gonna to wanna to set up a port forward to forward traffic coming in on port 8080 to 192.168.4.44 in my network, but you're gonna to wanna to forward it to whatever your local IP address is 
for your dedicated server. So now the housekeeping items are behind us and we are ready to start the dedicated server application. We're gonna navigate back to C, Program Files, x86, Farming Simulator 2022. We're gonna look for the dedicated server entry that has the red Giants logo and we're gonna to want to double click on that application. What we're gonna see is it's gonna open a command box and launch the dedicated server web interface. And at this point, we're gonna be able to navigate to the URL that is listed on the screen and we'll be able to pull up the dedicated server web interface. With that URL put into your web browser, you can navigate now to a page that's gonna look something similar like this. Enter the username admin and the password that you entered previously in the configuration file, and you're gonna be able to log in to your dedicated server. So here we are, we're logged in. This one is already set up and running. Now I'm gonna reference you to a video that I've already put out on how to set up a rented dedicated server. A fair bit of that video is gonna be extremely relevant to setting up the configuration for your private dedicated server. So I'm gonna go ahead and reference that up there in the upper right corner. And I'll also put a link to that down in the video description. So you wanna go ahead to that video at this point and watch the segments that relate to configuring the web server interface of a rented dedicated server which is gonna be the exact same method that you're gonna to use to configure this server interface on your private dedicated server. Now with the web server now fully configured, you're gonna click start on the web interface and you're gonna see on the dedicated server yourself, it's gonna launch the game in a command prompt. And at this point, we are now booting the game up. We're gonna watch the game continue to load on in and once the game has fully loaded, you're gonna see me connect to it here in the log. So at this point, the game is fully up, ready to go, and I'm getting ready to connect. As you see, I just connected. So what does it look like from the game's perspective? So in game, you're gonna to connect to it just like you would any other multiplayer session. I've already found it here on my list. We're gonna hit start. We're gonna enter the password we used to connect that we entered in the web interface as the game password. And we're booting it up. So from a player's perspective, there is absolutely zero difference between a dedicated privately run multiplayer server that you're running out of your own house versus a dedicated server that might be running in a data center somewhere that you're paying a monthly rented fee for. In fact, during the intro, I was actually connected to this very dedicated server. Now for you as the player on the local network, you're gonna have incredible response time. I'm seeing response times in the 10 millisecond range for my connection back to my server. And those who are connecting to you remotely, their experience is going to vary dependent upon your own home internet connection. Now, in my load testing of dedicated servers in the past, it seems like every person that connects to the server is going to pull a couple hundred kilobytes of data through your upload. So use that with kind of a little bit of a gauge as to how many people you can have on your dedicated server at any one point in time based on your internet connections upload. So I've seen servers where you have five, six to eight people connected having an upload sustained bandwidth of about one and a half to two megabytes. And if you're gonna be doing streaming or anything else, you just need to consider what that upload headroom needs to be. So guys, that is it. That is basically how you configure a privately owned dedicated server that you run out of your own house or out of your own network that you control. 
There's a little bit of setup. It can be a little daunting if you're not familiar with the process. But once you get work your way through it, it's going to be very rewarding because, as I said in the intro, one of the big advantages to running your own dedicated server is savings. Yes, you do have to buy a second full copy of the game. But if you run a server for more than eight months, nine months, you have more than paid for in savings the cost of that additional copy of the game. If you think about the fact that most rented providers, server providers, are going to be charging you approximately $1 per slot per month for the server, with a minimum typically of a four slot server. So at an absolute minimum, that's $4 a month. And if you have a server for a year, that's $48 for the one year well right there if you've purchased an extra copy of the game you've basically paid for one year's worth of a dedicated server host for just four concurrent players for that one year if you play the game for more than a year you've now saved money if you typically have a server that has more than four slots your buyback or your payback time is going to be significantly shorter than that one year. So running your own private dedicated server is definitely a way to save money. It's a way to have full control over your multiplayer experience. You do not have a disk limit with respect to mods when you run your own dedicated server. I mean, your, your mod limit is limited to the amount of storage capacity that you have on your server's hard drive, basically. Because, because in essence, when you add a mod to the server, you're going to be adding it to the mod folder, just like you would add it to the mod folder of your own personal install. Now, the one thing that I did not cover in this video that I would suggest doing would be to set up a task that launches the dedicated server application on restart. So when you restart your computer, your dedicated server, maybe after monthly patches and such, that it goes ahead and launches the dedicated server application when it boots into Windows. That way you don't have to remember to keep launching it so then you can go into the web server and start it. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you did like it, go ahead and click that like button. Like I said, it's not for everyone, but for the person that is interested and is willing to work through it, it's not that difficult. Just take your time and you'll be able to accomplish great things. And until next time, happy farming.